approach of manufacturing and what is our plan and how the private industries can participate. The advanced medium aircraft, as you will know that it's in 25 ton category, a medium weight twin engine. It, ha it, it has uh, all the fifth generation technologies. It can be flown <clears throat> like any other fifth generation aircraft, both stealth, non-stealth. It's supposed to carry precision weapons in internal weapon bay and some of the weight carrying capacity. And this is what is the configuration. Don't worry, it's available in the net. So this is the configuration. Uh, and the most important thing what we are working is developing these technologies indigenously and these technologies do not come one day. There is a considerable time is taken to develop and prove and then put it into the aircraft. So generally, if you look any one of these fifth generation tech, uh, aircrafts, sometimes these people, uh, I face a lot of question that, oh, you have copied this aircraft, copied that aircraft, I don't know how to answer. <laughs> okay, but anyway, there are certain common design drivers which may look from far that they look similar because they are having similar kind of uh, design drivers. But they are quite different, which once we go into the deep, then we will understand. So there are various ways or, or aspects of uh, stealth. The main, most important is what is taken in the design. Uh, while uh, designing the configuration is this shaping serpentine air intake, internal weapon bay, low supersonic drag. These are taken into account. The re See, what a difference makes between a four and a half generation or fourth generation, fifth generation, stealth was not a design driver. Here it's a design driver. And these are the features which will be available in all fifth generation aircraft. Then on top of that, you build stealth by adding materials and other aspects of stealth taking into it. And today, avionics is changing in very fast rate. So keeping in view of 2025 or 2030, the kind of avionics which we'll be having, we have planned and some of this has been already developed. DCS spoke about net-centric warfare, so it will have that, it has to have. We expect this kind of aircraft will have a thrust level requirement of 110 kilonewton class. Please mind the word class. It's not exactly 110. It's class means around something, okay? But the next slide will say that we would like to fly it with the readily available uh, engine, what is available. It will have IVHM, which is also another important aspect of future aircraft to keep the downtime low. <laughs> Swing roll is one of the things which was given by Air Force when we started. It has to be performed. Since it's stealth, it can go high, it will have a higher ROA and also in the internal weapon bay we can put fuel to get higher range. BVR capability is one of the things which is optimized, but it has to do also close combat with BVR fuels. And in the survivability, like other aircrafts, it's not only stealth. If you, too much of stealth you try to put, then it may not possible to use it. Uh, it may not be like F-22, USA could not afford it. It may happen. So obviously the stealth, the survivability is planned with a combination of stealth, appropriate EW and performance. And it will have various kinds of uh, missions to perform. Now, this is what is our realization plan. A little bit of DCS has already talked about because many of you are telling what is happening. So what we thought that we will first fly two technology demonstrator. It will have a fifth generation aircraft. Once we have this airframe ready and flown, 
the other things can be put in a phased manner to realize AMCA. So first two prototypes which we are designating as the next generation fighters because there will not be everything like what is there in MCA will be available but in phased manner the technologies and advanced engine will come to realize AMCA. Now these are the objectives. Now what happens this helps in de-risking the program. We need not wait for such technologies are not available, the program doesn't get delayed. The most important is here is the fifth generation airframe which we can prove it. To prove that is the main aim of these two technologies and also we can make other important decisions like what would be the SOP, the important aspects of fifth generation aircraft manufacturing, what kind of assess the manufacturing and maintainability issues because this is also a important aspects of design. <clears throat> now, coming back to the second part of it, the MCA development approach and private industries, some of the things I, I, I am going to reiterate again and may be known to you, but to begin with, this was touched by I think VCS, everything boils down of bu building the ecosystems. The ecosystems where you have a design expertise and tools, technologies, work centers where people are available to do it and prototype development and certification which takes quite a bit of time because the design changes also come there. Testing facilities and also the production facilities. Now thanks to LCA we have today this ecosystem in some form is present but the kind of aircraft requirement which DCS projected, this may not be sufficient or adequate. We need to enhance this ecosystem considerably in future years and I am going to talk about it a little more in details in the subsequent slides. Now first we will see this what is the cycle to build the aircraft, it takes some time starting from raw material, then you plan uh, assembly jigs, sub-assembly jigs, assembly jigs, detail parts manufacturing, then you do a sub-assembly. Our uh, approach is to equip that. And then final assembly, testing and so this is what is the total cycle. Now what we have planned in case of AMCA, already we have used the design for manufacturing and assembly, the concept in it. The main aircraft is broken into a large number of modules and <coughs> these modules in turn are sub-assembled in some of the vendors place, can be equipped. Some of the LRUs may not come but we would like them to equip with the dummy. In final assembly it can be done. So these are the various modules which first get manufactured, assembled and then the final assembly is done. And for that what we plan is these modules can go into a large number of tire to vendors and where they do the sub-assembly, manufacturing of components they can do it, otherwise they can get it done by the tire 3, tire 4, where the component comes, then suppose the wing assembly or the front fuselage assembly gets uh, done and you equip it. But finally everything comes in one place where the lead integration takes place, structurally, system wise, integration checks, final whatever the ground level checks. And then you do the flight testing and flight testing support. Now all this what is happened, what we call it in final assessment, uh, final assembly and checkout place, the FACO system. If you go to internet, wherever if you see the fight, a large number of fighter aircrafts are manufactured, you will see this concept is available. because. 
the same wing or left wing, right wing, I mean starboard or port wing getting done in one place, in other place and finally they have to come and get assembled. Now what is the challenge for these vendors for tier 2, model 1, model 2, model 3 in case of AMCA is high geometric complexity, it's not easy shape, there are because it's optimized, there are too many constraints and too many requirements contradictory in nature. So the shape is going to be complex. And uh, this is their always stringent design constraint, weight we have to bring it down, safety, QC standard, and also the diversity in manufacturing. You have uh, machine parts, you have uh, sheet metal, composites, forgings. So, <coughs> But what is important here, today's scenario, if we see this long lead time of manufacturing takes somewhere three to four months of the large components. And today we have few vendors, thanks to LCA, even some vendors are doing it for certain uh, uh, international OEMs, but component level, uh, but it requires for considerable uh, amount of enhancement in the capacity and those who want to venture, uh, they have to improve their capability or skill manpower. There is the last two slides. So this is the whole concept of our MCA manufacturing, which is available from ADA we do the left side plan, uh, plan for product, uh, producibility, quality manual, supply change management. There are a large number of LRUs which are developed by, are being developed by DRDO labs. So they will give TOT to private companies, it will come. Then you have the industrial partners and you have the components manufacturing, here the LRUs and all this is developed in FACO plant. And finally, the last point which I want to say, it requires to develop considerable skill sets if you have to do a large amount of production. So this is listed there. Thank you. Already here. I'm sorry I put you under time pressure, but I think you have been able to convey the essence of uh, what would be of interest to the industry. Uh, he gave background information and uh, the important point that he brought out is that there will be a requirement for upgradation of ecosystem that is being created for LCA and uh, mainly in terms of skills, tolerances and uh, he listed the major skills required which uh, I'm sure would be of great interest to the industry and also because of the modular design many subsystems uh, will be attempted by different vendors and they can uh, carry on their work in parallel. So thank you Dr. Ghosh. Uh, 